What is Gucci, everybody? I have been away for a long time, and I'm ready to get back into action. I was in England on a different continent for a while. I guess, yes, on a different island. But now I'm back, and I wanted to start with an iOS tutorial. I've been doing I've been doing Swift programming a lot, and I believe I made a video on this a little while ago about Swift enums, but I wanted to come back to it and fully comprehend the material to ease back into my video making voice. Cough, cough. <clears throat> so I don't sound like Darth Vader anymore, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over Swift enums, and so I'm going to simply upload Xcode, start up a project. The platform can be iOS or it can be OS X, it doesn't matter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over enum. So what's the best way to do this? The best way to do this is simply to make an enum. So you do that with the enum keyword, E-N-U-M, basically. And then what you can do is you can just go, you can just do an example, you can call whatever you want, example. I like to have the first little capitalize, and then you can have certain cases. So with an enum, an enum is actually used in Swift a lot to represent various states. So various ways to be able to express things. So for instance, I know it's expressed in the UI button class, you know, a button you may use in making an OS application, iOS application, to say if it's pressed, if it's in a normal state, or if it's displayed, or if it's hidden. So there's an enum for that. So I could have a case that could be hidden, it could be a case that could be displayed, and as long as you have them each line, you don't need a comma or anything. Case hidden, case or a pushed, or case normal. And so now what you can do is you can set a var equal to example, uh, a var, we'll call it a, and you can set it equal to example dot, we'll do normal. And then now that this var a knows that it's part of the enum, it's one of the enum, you can change it anytime you want. And so you can change it to example dot hidden if you wanted to. But also, since it's already since it already knows it's an enum, you can use the dot syntax and make things um, simpler. So you can say dot hidden without saying example, because it already knows it's part of that enum, it knows to look for the dot hidden. And so now the actually the major part of enums is to use them in a switch statement to identify which enum. So for instance, I can do a switch statement on A and then we can look for these certain cases. So depending what A is, I know it's going to be a certain enum, I can do different things based on the case. So now, just like we used last time, I can use the dot syntax to use dot hidden. And now for this case, I need to represent it with a colon. So I'm saying, okay, with this case, I'm going to represent what, hap um, what happens in the hidden case. And then with this, another case, I'm gonna do the dot displayed case. And with another case, it's auto indenting for me. I don't like that. I'm gonna do the dot pushed case. And then I'm gonna do the dot normal case. And I have a slight error right here. Let's see what it is just for our viewing pleasure. Case label in a switch should have at least one executable statement. Well, that's true. So we should at least have one executable statement. So you have to, if you are doing something in a switch statement, you actually need to say something. So displayed, we'll just simply print something out. And then trying to make my code more orderly. And then print line normal. So for all these cases, which I've covered in the enum, I, I do, I execute a statement, I print something out. Now let's say I did not have a case for the normal case. So possibly this switch statement could not cover all the enum cases. What it will do is it will, I will have an error and it will say the switch must be exhausted. It must be exhaustive. Consider, consider adding a default case. So what I could do is I could add the last statement dot normal, or I could add a default case and what default will do is it will it will default will be if none of the cases are fulfilled that I've already made a case for you are a bad person because you didn't write a statement for the normal and so as you can see now I have no errors and the reason because this is this allows for the default statement is that 
if I have an enum statement and it goes all the way through and doesn't ha handle any of these cases, dot .push, dot .display, dot .hidden, then it will simply go to the default. Now, an enum must have a current state. It really can't have a nil state like other objects can, or they can be set to nil. An enum must have a state, so it must be one of these four states. So default says I'll handle all the states that you don't want to handle in this switch statement. Maybe you only care about dot .hidden in this case, and every other, every other kind of state really just stays the same. So then you would have default. But also, you don't need to put you don't need to put default all the time if you handle all the cases, right? So that's pretty nice. Okay. So now the hidden part of of enums that I didn't talk about last time is that you can also add values in that way in a way to an enum. So what you can do is simply you can give enums values, which is really cool. And so one way to do that is simply give it set it equal to the number. You can set it equal to 100, set it equal to 23, and set it equal to 45. But also what you must do is you must prefix the enum with the type you're using. So I'm using the integer type. And so now, hopefully all these errors go away. So now I have all of those values. So now what I can do is I can simply print out a dot raw value. So one, and what I mean, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. So now that I've given, I've associated all of these enums with a type and also a property, in this case an integer, 1, 112, and 45, I need to be able to access them. So what I can do is I can print a dot raw to raw. My bad. I always forget it. Okay. So then I can print out a dot to raw. And it's giving me an error here. Yeah, raw value, not too raw. So now what that and you can see it printed out one there, and that's because a is dot hidden. And I set it to hidden right there. If I got rid of the statement and made it normal, then it actually printed out you're a bad person because it didn't go into the hidden statement. But see if if I print out the raw value of the enum, then that raw value will be used. So maybe I could have the enum handle a state, but the enum could also be associated with a number. So for instance, maybe if I wanted the enum to handle the days of the week, I could also associate with the number. So zero, um, if the week starts on Sunday, zero could be Sunday, one could be associated with Monday, and six could be associated with Saturday. So you could do that. I actually did that with an app I made that's on the App Store currently. So that is most of the true power of enums. I will maybe make a video. This video is getting too long, but I may make a video on the advances of enums and a little bit more futures. But for now, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you liked and what you didn't like in the comments below. Have the best day of your life.